So one really critical, and yet I think probably very new concept for us as we start to build an interactive application is this idea of a callback. And so I wanna spend some time explaining what a callback is and two of the reasons that we might use them that we're already encountering even as we start to get familiar with just the basics of the simple Android application. So um, first of all, let me use an analogy. So um, let's say you call up, and, and this is something that a lot of companies will do now, right? Let's say I call up like the, the, the internet company, right? That's, you know, a company I might call, my internet goes down, I call them up, I'm angry, wanna to talk to somebody, what's going on, right? Um, and I sit there on hold, right? So I'm sitting there, this irritating music playing, right? So this is sometimes called, um, you know, active waiting right, where I'm stuck, right? I really can't do anything else because I gotta sit there on this call and at some point, you know, someone's gonna pick up and they're gonna help me solve the problem. But this is frustrating, right? And it's also wasteful because I can't really do anything else. Um, so the alternative is what's called a callback. A callback says, when I call up, they say, um, uh, type in your number and when we have an agent available, they'll call you, right? And so this is the model that Android uses. And they're, they're, I'm gonna talk about two reasons why we use this model. Um, the first one we saw in our server code, or sorry, in our client code, uh, in our networking code. So the idea with Android is we're building an, an interactive application. And um, there are times though when I need to do something over the network. Anytime I do something over the network, that can be slow. That can take a while to, to finish. So when I ask for the list of courses, if I sit there waiting for the list of courses to come back, and somebody is trying to scroll or push a button or enter text into the search bar, the whole app is stalled, it's hung. And in fact, Android actually has rules that you will start to violate if you try to do this. So if you try to do, uh, Android prevents you from what's called doing networking on the main thread that's used by your application. Now there's a bunch of concepts in here I don't wanna get into because it's way too early, right? Um, but the idea is uh, your app needs to stay responsive. So if somebody's using the UI, the app is running and responding to those events, it can't be there stuck waiting for some sort of network activity to happen. And so to address this, we use what's called a callback. Um, and you'll actually see uh, two places here that callbacks are used by uh, our client. The, the first one is when the client actually makes the request, this code right here is a callback. This is code that's passed to the Volley library and it's run when the networking request completes. So that's a callback that we use for the Volley networking library. But then you also see we have a callback registered by the user of our client that allows us to pass back the information about the courses. So when the main activity starts up, it needs to load the list of courses by making a network request, but it doesn't stop and wait for that to happen. Instead, it provides a callback. When the networking request completes, that callback allows it to retrieve the information or to receive the information. So it's a lot like, you know, giving, you know, the networking library my number and then it calls me back when it has that list of courses. I'm like, oh, okay, well now I can use them to update the UI. How is this done in code? So in Java, a lot of times the way we implement a callback is through an interface. So you'll see this is the same way. Um, when I call get summary, I have to provide something that implements this course client callbacks interface. And that's what allows this code to call back. So there's a function that actually gets called. This is how callbacks are implemented in computer code. Instead of a phone number to call, we give it a function to call. And so the idea is that um, when we're done, I call this method on the uh, whoever called the you know get summary function. Who implements this? Well, in the code that we've given you, the one of the uh, pieces of code that implements this is the main activity. So when the main activity starts up it makes this call to get summary and it passes as a class that implements the interface itself. And this callback down here, which is called summary response, is how the data is returned. So that's one use for callbacks, which is when I can't wait. Uh, I'm not allowed to wait because that would cause the app to stall. So instead I use this callback pattern. I start some slow operation. I provide a method to call when it finishes and then that method is actually how the data gets back to me. So uh, when this summary response method gets called, that's how the main activity finds out about all the courses that it needs to show in the list. And actually that's why when you start up the application, you may notice this is a little bit of a delay between when the app starts and when the list of courses is shown. 
because the app starts up and it's kind of ready to go, but then that network request takes a little bit of time. During that time, the screen is blank. Once those courses come through, the UI is updated and you see the list. Okay, so that's one use for callbacks. I can't wait for a slow operation. The other use for callbacks is when you don't know when something's going to happen, and that's UI, right? So when I create a UI, someone could click on something, and I don't know when that's gonna happen, so I can't wait for it, but I need a mechanism so that Android can notify me when UI events happen. So again, two reasons for callback, can't wait, and the other reason is I don't know. So again, imagine that it's sort of like giving Android, again, using the phone number analogy, giving Android the number and say, call this number anytime the contents of the search bar change, and I'll take care of it, right? And we've already looked at one of those. So uh, this on query text change is a callback. It's registered by the app when it starts up. And what it does is it tells Android, hey, there's this search bar that's part of my app. Whenever its contents change, please run this method. And it gives me the information that I need to process it, which is what's the current contents of the search bar, right? That's this query string that's passed to the method. So, you know, this is new to us and it's unusual and it's weird, right? We're used to calling methods and retrieving the results, but sometimes we also need to invert the relationship. So callbacks really, instead of calling a method and waiting for the results, we provide a method that gets called when something useful happens, like when some slow operation finishes, network example, or when the user interacts with the UI, the UI example. Now you might wonder, how does Android know to call this method? Well, up here at the top, we set, let's see, uh, that is right here. Um, this call registers our activity to receive events from that part of the UI. If we don't do this, we don't get those events. So this is us telling Android, when the, this part of the UI has something happen to it, please run code in my application. This callback model is such a central part of UI programming. You can't build a UI without it because when you build a UI, fundamentally you don't know when certain things are gonna happen and you need some way of being notified. And callbacks are how this is done in many, many UI frameworks. Um, in fact, let's actually go up to the top here. If we look, so callbacks are, like I said in Android, frequently done by implementing interfaces. So our main activity implements four different interfaces. And these are all callbacks, right? So let's look through them. This one is a callback interface that's used to notify us that the contents of that search uh, area have changed. Um, this one is used by the, uh, the list library and it's used to notify us when the, the, the list of courses is, has changed. Um, this is an interface that we, de we declared ourselves. This is part of the client. This is used to notify us when there's data available, when that list of summaries that we requested is now available. And the last one here is actually even more interesting. Um, this one, and this is one that we're gonna use um, in the next part of the MP. So you might think, well, what's another type of event that we might be interested in from our UI, right? What about this? Clicking. Um, and what happens when we click on something? Well, let's find out. So let's do log.i, uh, we'll do this, uh, clicker and then we'll say, uh, you know, course.title or something like that, uh, get title. Oh, course.getTitle. Um, and so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to rerun the app. Um, right. I mean, on course click gives you a little bit of a, in, it's, it's sort of a hint, right, about what's happening here, right? Um, and so I'll open up my log cat. I'm going to look for clicker. Um, and once the app starts up, what you'll see, again, this is another example of a callback because another interesting UI event is somebody clicked on something. And you'll see that when the user clicks on a course in the list, not only do I get this callback, but the callback identifies the course that was clicked on. And so one of the things we'll do as part of the next checkpoint, not this checkpoint, but the next checkpoint that we work on together is that we'll add a new feature to the app, which is that when the user clicks on this, it actually shows them more detailed information about that course. Anyway, so this callback pattern, you know, as far as being able to build UIs, things that really interact with the user, understanding how callbacks work is tremendously important because they're such a central part of building anything that interacts with the user.